Hey everyone. So, uh, <laughs> wasn't planning to do a video today. I was actually in the middle of doing some college homework, but uh, I needed to take a break. And while I was on my little break from homework, I noticed something happened at Kotaku. Uh, this was posted yesterday and I somehow missed it. Uh, but Kotaku essentially made a massive oopsie. And I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo has officially blacklisted the outlet. Now, what we're about to talk about can seem controversial in some regards, uh, but it's only controversial in so much of uh, the argument for and against piracy. Uh, but I think we're all in pretty good agreement, even those of you out there that massively enjoy emulation, that advertising piracy of a brand new released game, in this case Metroid Dread, is not... Uh, something any professional outlet, which Kotaku purports to be, they pretend to be one anyways, uh, should be doing. Obviously, if some random YouTuber does it, whatever. This is a professional outlet, though, an actual business that's owned by other corporate entities. So this is rather baffling. Uh, but we're going to get into this article. After I remind you, we are actually giving away three copies of Metroid Dread. Uh, all you need to do for now is subscribe to the channel. We actually have a few other things uh, later this month to kind of flesh out that giveaway. Uh, but for now, just be subscribed because, hey, win any of our giveaways, whether on live stream or otherwise, you have to be subscribed anyways. And you know what? I, I, I assume you're enjoying this video. You're still here, right? Right? All right, so the article was written by Zach Zewizen. So Z-W-I-E. Z -E -N. And currently the title is Metroid Dread is already running on Switch emulators. The issue you're going to find now is that they have since edited the article and gone in and got rid of all of the offending content, even though it seemed to be the entire point of the piece. Uh, the original title uh, was, well, Metroid Dread is already running great on Switch emulators. Remember, the new title is Metroid Dread is already running on Switch emulators. They got rid of the word great. But here's the thing, they got rid of a lot more. So there's an entire Reddit thread on this over on the official Nintendo Switch Reddit. Uh, I will link to that down below and to the original Kotaku article. Uh, but here's what it says. Um, <laughs> this person on the Switch Reddit said, I think this deserves a discussion because I would not be surprised if Kotaku ends up being blacklisted by Nintendo from this. And their past months have been constant clickbait. Anyways, Kotaku's been clickbait for a long time. I'm not one to sit here and complain too much about clickbait. We all know that whether you're a YouTuber, whether you are a uh, journalist, I mean, not even for places like CNN or Fox News or wherever the heck you are, uh, clickbait is just kind of part of the industry at this point, whether we like it or not. Um, as an example on YouTube, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I haven't used clickbait titles or thumbnails or anything in the past or won't again in the future because, hello, this is YouTube and you got to get people's eyes on your video before you worry about, you know, anything else. So getting the eyeballs there and then hopefully the content keeps them here and keeps you guys engaged and wanting to subscribe. Moving on, uh, it says the article in question is titled Metroid Dread is already running great on Switch emulators. Considering the game was, at the time of writing, less than 24 hours old. Literally came out less than 24 hours. You know, basically the article came out at like 5 o'clock yesterday. It was less than 24 hours. Metroid Dread was on the market for less than 24 hours officially. Insane. Um, the opening paragraph uh, originally started out like this. Hey, real quick, if you are a Nintendo lawyer or employee, just like, don't read this. It was a silly mistake. Ignore this blog. You can go now. Okay, everyone else? Kotaku let this come to the front page of their website. This had to be approved by a team of editors, and that's the opening line already admitting that this is an article that's going to piss off Nintendo. Moving on, uh, they could have been a bad attempt at being edgy, but then the article goes inequivocally full pirate mode. Released yesterday and developed by Mercury Steam, Metroid Dread is the awaited 2D return of the Metroid series. You can read our full review here, but the short answer, it's a solid game, more than solid, but Neither here nor there, uh, with some nice looking visuals and surprisingly tricky boss fights. It is a Switch exclusive, as you might expect. But all you need is a Switch emulator and a decently powerful PC. And you can play Dread on your computer right now, and it looks great. This is factually wrong. 
The only way to legally emulate Switch is to install a custom firmware on a launch model Switch precisely from March 17 to early summer 18 and use it to rip a cartridge on PC. Writing all you need is a decently powerful PC is directly telling the viewer to download a pirated ROM, which is a fact, literally a fact. Um, you cannot uh, talk about things like this on a website without literally saying that, you know, without saying that you need to go do something illegal. I want to note the article never told users to go download ROMs. But it did basically say go download ROMs by saying that's all you need. When really you actually need a launch model switch, a version one switch. You also need custom firmware. You also need to obviously own the game so you can rip it. This is the only legal way. Remember, this game was less than 24 hours old when they put this article out there. And they were already telling people to go pirate it. Kotaku was advertising pirating Metroid Dread on the front page of their website. Let that sink into your guys' brains. A major news outlet, a major publication that gets review copies of games, including Metroid Dread, was publicly telling people to pirate Metroid Dread. What? Moving on. So the worst is yet to come. This is a bit of the controversial part here. I don't think it's too controversial to say, yeah, you shouldn't be telling people to pirate the game. Um... As the article closes with the following paragraph, if you want to play the rest of the Metroid franchise and don't want to shell out large amounts of money on old consoles and games, your best bet is emulation. As is often the case, Nintendo, like most game publishers, is really bad about maintaining access to their past games outside of a few big sellers. Thank God for pirates, emulators, modders, and hackers. So, look, look. I'm not going to take issue necessarily with emulating old games, pirating old games nintendo has done a poor job making these games accessible and to a certain um degree i can understand why some people are going to view it as morally fine not legally fine morally fine okay i'm not going to sit here and argue about that that is obviously up to everyone's personal desires and their own morals and where they draw the line on what's okay and what's not okay i will say though that saying thank god for pirates emulators modders and hackers after writing an entire article that was specifically aimed at advertising that people should be pirating Metroid Dread. Mm. No, this ain't it, Chief. Look, I don't care if you personally have pirated Metroid Dread. More power to you. What am I going to do? Come to your house, slap you on the wrist, call the cops on you, inform the Nintendo police, you know, get the, the Nintendo ninjas to show up. What am I going to do? You're going to do what you're going to do. I can't control what any of my viewers do. You guys are your own people, and you guys might be totally okay with this. I know people that have openly said on my Twitter that they were playing Metroid Dread a week ago. It hadn't even come out yet. And no, they didn't get one of those copies that fell off a truck and shipped to them early. They were playing it on PC. So look, people pirate things. It is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and judge you for it. But this is a professional outlet. This is an outlet that you need credentials to even be hired by. You are a professional journalist, supposedly. And I understand, we can all laugh at Kotaku together because Kotaku continues to do Kotaku things. And yeah, even the guy, the one of the guys that had a little bit of moral high standard there, uh, and Stefan Dottillo, who used to be the editor-in-chief, left and now works somewhere else because there's been a whole mess with the site going on sale and being sold through multiple companies. So obviously the quality of the journalism is probably at an all-time low, and this article exemplifies that. Now look, imagine if this was a front-page piece on IGN. Kotaku, for whatever we want to say, still has a really large audience. It's significantly larger than the amount of people who are going to actually watch this video. Kotaku, for whatever it's worth, still has value in this industry. I understand if you don't personally value them, but enough people do that they keep going to their website to visit them. Check out the reviews, comment on their articles, like the article, share them, etc., etc. Obviously, the really crappy stuff like this will get shared, but even the good stuff gets shared. The bottom line is, no matter what happens, Kotaku is still relevant. Now, I'm obviously going to put Kotaku on blast, and this isn't the first time I have put traditional journalism on blast. And no, this isn't me touting YouTubers over them. I'm not saying, trust me, more than you trust them. No. 
No, don't do that. I will say what's interesting about YouTubers, like say this YouTube channel versus an outlet like that is I'm responsible for everything. Whereas at Kotaku, there's actually a team of people, including a team of editors that have to approve things before they appear on the front page of Kotaku. So this went through a team of editors to even appear in the first place, at least on my channel. If I put out a bad video, if I put out some misinformation, like calling HDMI cables 1.4, 2.0, 2.1, that's not really how speeds of HDMI cables are determined. Um, there's just, it's like standard high speed, ultra high speed, et cetera. They, they're based on the speed capabilities, which aren't really based on the level of HDMI. HDMI 1.4, 2.0, 2.1, et cetera. All 1.3 actually before, 1.0 at one point. All of that's determined by the actual port and the chip behind the port. So. Yes, I'm okay. I make mistakes. I'm not stupid. Yeah, okay. I didn't have to break my Switch OLED. I made a mistake. I should have just went and bought a heat gun. I should have took it to uh, I don't know, maybe my local mall where they do screen repairs and just paid the guy to remove the screen for me. I get it. There's a whole bunch of things I could have done. I don't claim to be an expert. Yeah, I said that really long chip on the one board was the 64 gigs of memory. I didn't really even look at it. Turns out the 64 gigs was still on that board, by the way. It was just on the other side of the board, and that really long thing that looked like a chip was just a piece of padding, okay? I get it. I make mistakes. It didn't really change the whole point of what I was saying. The memory module was still on that board. It was just on the backside, but it doesn't matter. I make mistakes. I'm not perfect, all right? I'm not. But at least I'm comparable to myself. I approve of all my videos. I edit all my videos. I record all my videos. I make 90% of the thumbnails on my channel. Everything that happens goes through me. And even if I hire somebody else to edit my video, hire somebody else to make a thumbnail, I still approve of the final product before it goes up. So I'm accountable to myself. And you guys always keep me accountable. <laughs> Believe it or not, as much as people might think I focus too much on the haters, one thing that's nice about the haters is they do keep you accountable. Okay? They don't let anything get by. They don't let any mistake slip through the cracks. As an example, um, I recently did, actually just yesterday, did a video on accessories for Nintendo Switch and talked about this uh, extra grip accessory from Skull and & Company and said, yeah, it's not really any different than using the Nintendo one, except apparently it is. Um, it can charge your Joy-Con while you're playing, which lets your Joy-Con last a lot longer. That is a fundamental difference. And it's actually cheaper than the original Joy-Con grip. It is a, a big mistake I made in the video. And I will say this, um, it's not anywhere on the box. Skull & Company probably should do a better job advertising on the box. So I am not gonna blame them though. I should have close, more closely examined the product and noticed, oh yeah, there is a USB-C charging port on the top hidden right between where, where the two halves of the plastic come together. I should have noticed that and I didn't. It's a mistake I made and a bunch of you guys called me out for that in the comments. It's fine. What's nice about me as a YouTuber anyways is that, hey, I'm accountable to myself and you guys hold me accountable. On Kotaku, I don't even know who to blame. Do I blame the original writer who was claiming this was a blog post? Heck, this could have been a fan writing this. I have no idea. Do I blame them? I don't even know if this person works for Kotaku. But it's still got to appear on the front page of Kotaku. So, what editor do I blame? Who did this go through? I don't know. And that's what sucks about some of these big websites is we don't know who to blame. As an example, we, we could yell at Philip Mewson, which we certainly did about his plagiarism, but who were the exact people that approved of that review and other things he plagiarized going live? We don't know. We can go look at the staff list and start assuming, oh, this is the editor, or this is the senior editor, or this and that, this person's the chief. We can, we can just try to guess, but we don't know who exactly okayed it, or if anybody did. At least at my YouTube channel, the buck stops with me. I'm responsible for everything that happens on this channel. So I'll say that is one fundamental difference between YouTubers, typically. Obviously, there's some YouTubers that are rather big and have a whole team of people, and it's like the accountability usually still falls back on somebody, isn't it? With Linus Tech Tips, if there's a mistake in any of their content, ultimately Linus is the one that is the most responsible for allowing that content to exist, for hiring someone who maybe didn't fit the job, whatever the case might be, although they have a pretty good vetting process before they make any of their hires full-time and make them publicly known. Still, <sighs> Kotaku, I want to say do better, but I'm not so sure you care.
This has gotten you more attention than probably anything you put out. Your Metroid Dread review probably has less views than this article does where you were openly telling people to pirate Metroid Dread. So if Nintendo blacklists you, can't blame them. Heck, was the person who reviewed your game, did he even play a legal copy of Metroid Dread? Or did Nintendo even send you one? Or did you just pirate it? I guess we'll never know. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this late Sunday night video. I'm actually watching a little bit of uh, Sunday night football. Uh, kind of hoping for the Chiefs to win. I have their head coach. That's right. One of my fantasy teams has head coaches, and I have the Chiefs head coach in. I'm um, not looking good right now. But anyways, thank you guys. You guys are amazing. And I will catch you tomorrow for our normal Monday night live stream. And, yes, we will have a typical news video and maybe something else tomorrow. I'm still playing some Metroid Dread stuff right now, so I'm not sure what day my final impressions of that will come out, but eventually, eventually.